Have you ever wanted to play Disco Elysium, but it's set in steampunk London at the turn of the 20th century, where dwarves, centaurs, cyclops, minotaur, werewolves, and prostitutes converge in a seedy dance of death and deception? If so, you're probably these people. Sovereign Syndicate is a non-traditional, combat-free RPG that gives you control of a fascinating quartet of characters, each with a complex backstory and compelling role to play in this wicked Victorian-era nightmare. You'll kick things off as Atticus Daly, a sexy gin-soaked minotaur seemingly set on drug-induced self-destruction. That is, until a mysterious old crone telepathically invades your hungover thoughts and starts guiding you on a weird trip down memory lane, back to the orphanage you swore to leave buried in the recesses of your sad subconscious. Perhaps a little dance in the opium den will help put your troubled mind at ease, or rip it wide open. While Atticus trips, let's check in on Clara Reed, a high-class dolly mop to London's scummy elite and desperate to buy herself a new life in a faraway land. But when the courtesan killer, a Jack the Ripper replica, starts murdering all of Clara's hooker friends from the Velvet Rose, East End's favorite fictional brothel, well, it would seem like Miss Reed's time in London has just begun. Speaking of time, Sovereign Syndicate rounds out its quirky quartet in an almost abandoned Clock Tower, where the unlikely duo of Teddy Redgrave and his eager automaton Otto plot out bounty hunting hijinks for the highest bidder, be that the boys in blue down at Scotland Yard or the dockside gang down the street. Together, Teddy and Otto, the latter of whom might go on to accidentally inspire a citywide robot uprising, find themselves unknowingly intertwined in the drama of Atticus and Clara, thanks in large part to a masked stranger who for some reason is set on bringing everyone together. In short, Sovereign Syndicate delivers a wonderful narrative-driven experience that sports an intricate multi-pronged plot, vibrant and memorable characters, and the first non-voice acted 5 out of 5 I've ever awarded a game for dialogue. Though technically a shameless recreation of Disco Elysium's dialogue system whereby parts of your personality compete against each other, Sovereign Syndicate manages to stand out by delivering an unparalleled attention to historical linguistic detail. Really, there's an almost overwhelming amount of Victorian slang on display here. But the game's handy built-in dictionary means word nerds like me will never have to stop to look something up. It's a nice touch that earns the game solid marks for user interface, which brings us to Sovereign Syndicate's gameplay and content. When you're not busy reading, and let's be honest, you always will be, Sovereign Syndicate gives you a wonderfully weird, if small slice of Victorian London to explore, with six locations in total, excluding the game's exciting finale. Each spot features a fun cast of side characters who will go on to give you dozens of mostly interesting side quests, but the real fun here is seeing the same things through the eyes of different playable characters. As Atticus, Clara, Teddy, and Otto interact with the world, you'll unlock tarot cards, which open up branching dialogue options and give you more ways to approach RNG encounters. That's right, as was the case with Disco Elysium's dice system, Sovereign Syndicate has you draw minor tarot cards to determine whether certain parts of your personality fail or succeed at certain circumstances. For example, will Atticus's wit figure out where the heck this masked stranger is taking you? Probably not, because I'm role-playing Atticus as a max animal instinct idiot who drinks and or smashes everything in sight. At least I was until I started to feel bad about plunging his hope into the gutter, thereby denying me access to happier branching dialogue options and what can I say, I'm a happy little dude. So, well, nothing about this system really impressed me per se, it does a good job of injecting intrigue into the many, many walls of text you'll read. Before moving on to style, a quick gripe. The player pathing and invisible walls in Sovereign Syndicate are ass. And on occasion, a character might get stuck in, oh, I don't know, a grand piano? If ever this happens, immediately reload the game's last autosave, because if you do anything of substance in this stuck state, the game will autosave again and you'll reload back into it. Thus, my advice is to manually save every 30 minutes to prevent a potentially humongous setback. Luckily, this issue didn't ruin my playthrough, but I'm nonetheless giving the game a 2 out of 5 for playability with the hopes that this issue is cleaned up by full release on January 15th. Finally, a few words on style. Sovereign Syndicate lacks in high-res textures, quality lighting, and smooth animations, but the overall visual effect is still an enjoyable one thanks to these pretty watercolor transitions between menus and hand-drawn comic panel-style action sequences. And while the sound effects here are nothing special, the game's soundtrack stands out thanks to dedicated songs for each area and a full-length oral performance by the lovely Miss Reed herself. Yeah. 
In the end, Sovereign Syndicate is a very enjoyable, if non-traditional RPG that, without combat, ends up playing more like an interactive point-and-click adventure title. I beat the game in a little over 10 hours, but feel a second playthrough is warranted, so for 20 bucks, I think the game presents above average value. I'm giving Sovereign Syndicate a solid aggregate mega score of 3.75 out of 5, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the game or my review. Until next time, this is Scope, and thanks for watching.